Are we recording the, mini the meeting so that we can share with others um, the discussion that we're going to have? It? And again, just reminding you that if your microphone is not muted, everything that you are saying, everybody else is going to hear it. So please, I'm asking that you keep your, your microphones muted unless you are speaking in the meeting. All right? Um, I know I see that. So Dante, Danette's iPhone, your phone is not muted. I can't keep muting everybody. Hello? Hello? At six o'clock, and we are about to start. We send the link in the year group. All right, all right. Just send me a WhatsApp message, and I'll send it to you now. All right, so um. All right, so thank you very much. Um, we want to start. It's now almost ten minutes after six, and we intended to have a very short meeting. Um, I know that there are some persons who are not here, but we'll go ahead with those persons who are here now, and I don't want your data to be all done, and we have to start the meeting. So let me just, again, I'm going to mute everybody and ask that you keep your microphones muted so that our background, we won't have all this background noise. We're going to start as usual with prayer. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Chambers, who Mrs. Chambers, who is the Grade Eight Coordinator, to offer us a word of prayer for us. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Father, we praise your name. We come before you, God, because we want to acknowledge your presence in everything that we do. Father, we know how wonderful and how merciful and how forgiving and we know how awesome you are. And so, God, we come before you, Lord Jesus, because, Father, there is none like you and you are worthy to be praised and to be worshipped. Father, we thank you that we could meet in this fashion as teachers and administrators and as, as guardians and as parents. Father, we thank you that we could come together this afternoon, Father, just to here and to discuss, Father, the way forward for the new academic year. Father, I pray that whatever we're going to be saying and whatever is going to be done this afternoon, that, Father, the end of it, you will be pleased. So we put everything into your hands and we invite your presence right now into our midst as we begin our meeting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Chambers, um, for leading us off on the right foot. And we hope that the presence of the Lord will be with us, not just throughout the course of this meeting this evening, but as we go, as we go towards the start of the new school year, and indeed when we shall resume our face-to-face -face activities in September. We hope that the Lord will be with us and he will continue to guide us and protect us and keep us safe from all the, the issues related to COVID in particular and whatever other um, dangers that may be around us. So thank you very much, Mrs. Chambers. I know Mr. Mr. Kogel, or one of our vice principals, is also here with us. As I said before, we want this to be a very brief meeting. 
However, we want parents to feel free to ask questions um, if there are any clarifications that they would want to seek or any, any information that they are seeking to get, we're asking you to, to ask. Um, we want to, the meeting has been recorded, so we will share the meetings on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, so that those parents who are not able to be here now, they will get the chance to, to hear what was discussed. So if there are any questions that may be useful, that where the answers may be useful to other parents, please feel free to ask them um, when the time is appropriate. Uh, remember that you, we can't all talk at the same time. So if you want to, to ask a question or to say something, you could just click on participants and click on the raise, raise hand feature so that you can ask a question. So I see, for example, I see two persons hands up now. I'm not sure that they are ready to ask the question, but please um, remember to feel free to ask your questions. All right, so I want to tell you thanks for being here. We have 141 persons here now. Um, we have, well, realistically, we could have as many as 500 persons, but I know that not everyone would have been here. Um, but those of you who are here, we are really appreciative that you would have taken the opportunity to be here. And I want to point out that based on where we are going now as a society, meetings like these are going to be more regular. Um, this is a medium that we may have to use from time to time to try to get parents um, involved in our decision making and to inform them of what is happening at school. I know that sometimes parents find it difficult to get time off from work and therefore um, this may actually be a blessing in disguise for many of you. The purpose of the meeting today is simply to update you on our plans for back to school. I know that many persons there, you would have been following what's happening in the news as it relates to what will be happening in schools come September. Um, we want to ensure that you are aware of what is likely to happen at States and so that you can make your own plans, you can make your own arrangements around the plans that we would have put in place. Now, let me first of all commend all those parents and all those students who made the effort um, during the March to June period to try and ensure that their children kept active in terms of their involvement in school activities, whether they were able to go online or simply to try their very best at home to do, to do school related work um, on their own. It would have been very important that students kept abreast of what was required of them from the syllabus. I know that many persons, or many others, would not have done as much as they could have in terms of um, ensuring that they kept abreast of their bookwork. Um, some persons stayed home and ate and got fat and who could go out and run and play, did all of that. But we have to understand that time is important and you can never make up for lost time. And therefore, those of you who did not make good use of the time, there will be challenges lying ahead for you when when we resume in September. But having said that, I think that as, as children, it would have been a trying time. It would have been a trying time, time for you because it would have been the first time that most of you would have been out of school for such an extended period of time. And I'm sure that there were times when you became frustrated with being at home, not being able to go and do the things that you are normally involved in. We are happy that things may, um, would have improved over time. We are not sure exactly what has happened over the last week or so, but we continue to pray that things will improve and that things will get back to some semblance of normalcy um, as time goes by. Now, let us think, talk about school for September. We are aware that there are going to be restrictions as to how schools there are going to be restrictions. I, I keep having to mute persons. Keep having to mute persons, which is this, this disrupting my, my, my conversation. Just reminding you, please. Um, Sheridan Nation is saying she's not hearing anything. Please check, please check your speakers. Please check your speakers because we are sure that this is working. All right, so um, you would have heard about the different arrangements that the ministry has been put, um, suggesting that we put in place for the start of the new school year. Um, 
schools will have different ways of operating. For us at States, our plan is that school will function normally, meaning that all schools will come to, all students will come to school each day of the week. All students will come to school each of the five days of the week, and we will have school during regular hours from eight to three o'clock. So there will be no shift school for us. There will be um, no rotation as it relates to students because for some school students will, have, will come to school one some days and stay at home some days. For us, students are expected to be at school all days of the week um, from eight to three. We have a challenge. We will have a challenge for students in grades seven to nine because our classrooms, our classrooms will not be able to accommodate the 45 students that are normally in a class at States. So what we are going to be doing is that we are going to be dividing each class into groups of, into five groups of nine students each. So for each, that young man, Jamil Foster, please go and put on a shirt. All right, so, so we will be dividing each class into groups of nine, five groups of nine students each. So your child will be in a group of nine students where one day of the week, one day each week, they will, they will not go into their classrooms, but instead they will be in a holding area where they will be met by other teachers. The subject that are going on at the time, they will be, the teacher will share information with them and they will stay in those holding areas to do work related to the topics that the rest of the 36 students in their class will be doing. So everybody will be at school, but one day out of the week for each student, they will not be in their regular classes, but maybe inside the auditorium, for example, or by the gazebo, or by the area, by the grandstand that we will be um, furnishing with, with chairs. We'll make sure that Wi-Fi is there so that students can do work on their own for that one day. For the other four days, they will attend their classes with the other 35 students and attend regular face-to-face -face classes with their teachers. So, um, so, so what it means, what it means is that what we won't, again, what it means is that for one day each week, and we won't have it be the same day each week, so the first week, somebody will miss their classes on a Monday, second week on a Tuesday, third week on a Wednesday, fourth week on a Thursday, and fifth week on a, on a Friday. So every six weeks, every six weeks, the student will miss, will miss the same class, but they will get the work. They will have to do work on their own related to the topic, and they'll be able to get the notes from the students who would have been in the class or from the teacher. Um, if things change, well, we are also going to ensure that each student, so each student is going to be assigned a school email address and they will be assigned, they will be given um, access to a Google account. So all students, when they come back, they will be given access to a Google account and they will be able, they will be part of Google classes for all their subject areas. We are going to ensure that even if the teachers don't teach inside the Google Classroom, all the material that is being used in classes will be posted inside the, the Google Classroom, included, including um, assignment, homework assignments. They will also be required to do tests online from time to time. And parents, parents will have access to these platforms so that they can monitor what their, what their children will be doing. We'll also be ensuring that RenWeb, that parents have web access to RenWeb so they can check for students' attendance, students' performance, what they are doing in classes um, by, by accessing web, um, RenWeb. Um, some persons are saying that they are not hearing. Um, no, but make it on, make it on. No, you are still here. Jesus Christ. Persons, Jamil, talking from your background, please mute. All right, so the so we will be focusing a lot. We'll be trying to focus on face-to-face -face classes. However, we'll be integrating the technology in the class, classrooms, nah, yeah. for students. I make a silly video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Rock or something? All right, so we will be we'll be focusing or ensuring that every student will have the opportunity to do face-to-face -face classes. Um, but we will also be integrating technology. So there will be what we call a blended approach where work would be done online as well as face-to-face. -face. It is important for students to understand that all the work that was not done in their previous year last year. So if you were in grade seven last year or grade eight last year, you have to be reminded. We need to remind the children that they will have to do all the work for the new school year, as well as the work that was not done the previous year. So the work that should have been done in March, April, May, and June will have to be done along with all the work that should have been done between September, that will be done between September and June of 2020-2021. So we have to accept and realize that there will not be the opportunity for our students to waste a lot of time, right? Those persons who are not hearing, it is because something is wrong with your speaker phones. So please, with your speakers, so please make the adjustment and change the setting so that you can hear the audio, but it is, um, I'm sure everybody else is hearing, right? Uh, questions, are there any questions? Ask no mommy. Many ask. Just done it. Go ahead and ask. Um, so but what about when it when it is lunchtime? How will those children um will the, will the line be still the same right. or will there be different um, very 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 good question and I should have shared, but I'm happy that you asked. So our biggest concern, our biggest concern is going to be the issue of students coming in, in the mornings on the bus and through the gate um, or break periods or lunch periods and our and the dismissal periods so what we have what we have um what we are arranging is that of course well first of all we want the students to understand that the crowded in the buses are should well they should not tolerate it so if they are in a bus and the drivers are packing the buses or the taxis they should refuse from, from going in there We'll be meeting with the busmen and having a discussion with them about ensuring that students are not crowded and all over their, their places. They should ensure that the students wear masks while they are in the buses. And of course, they should try and um, minimize as much as possible the interaction that takes place in the public transportation. But it is the responsibility of the students, and I know it's difficult, it is the responsibility of the students to ensure that they are following the protocols in short, in terms of wearing the mask, not speaking up to each other in each other's face, not um, not too close and chummy with, with those around them. When they are to come onto the campus, we will um we will have monitors that um that monitor how close they are to each other, make sure that their temperature, everybody will have to have their temperature tested every single day while before they enter the campus. Um they, of course, will have to practice hand washing um, protocols and sanitization. So we will have hand washing stations and sanitization stations right around the campus so that they, they keep their hands clean right throughout the day. Um, for break time and lunch time, we're going to stagger those periods. So we will not, as what normally happens is that we have a half hour period for break time for grade seven to nine and another half an hour for for grades 10 and 11. And then for lunch, we have one hour between 12 and one for seven to nine. And then the grades 10 and 11 would come out at 12.30. That's half an hour after, grade, after the grade sevens and, and um, at grade sevens to nine. We are going to change that and have a rolling, a rolling lunch and break so that students will be able to buy their tickets anytime throughout the day. And we'll have extended lunch and break periods so what we will do is allow them to the talk, have the talk shop remain, remaining open all day. And we'll also have additional serving stations for both break and lunch. So we won't have um, just one window where persons get their lunch and break. We will also try and implement a delivery, a delivery um, service where you can order your lunch and it may be delivered to you in your classrooms or on the home your stage or some other convenient place. So we will we won't um, we'll try and not restrict where persons are served. And as again, 
we remind the students they are going to be markers around the campus as to where they should be standing in relation to another student. Please remind them that they are to follow those protocols. Some of them find it difficult staying too far from their friends, but we are asking that they that they they um they please do so. Mask. Everybody is to wear a mask. We prefer if you wear a solid color mask. Oh, right, so no fancy mask with all kind of designs and so on. And we're not going to tell you to take off the mask and go without. But we prefer if you wear a solid color, whether white or black or school colors. Um, we will have masks from, from school color masks, I think for three, either 250 or $300. So you can buy a school mask, but you don't have to buy it. You can take your own, but you must wear a mask, right? Okay. Um, the question about having students in class all day, that will not happen. We are not going to have students in classes all day. As a matter of fact, we are, we are going to ask teachers to allow students to come in and out of the classroom from time to time, especially they can take, so if they are doing an activity that a child is finished, they can run to the bathroom or run to the ticket office so that not everybody is using the bathroom, the ticket office, the talk shop, the canteen at the same time. Right, so what we'll, what we'll be trying to do is to basically have an open campus for the entire day. Of course, students will have to understand that they will have to be very disciplined. They can't, we will not allow students to be around, loitering around. We still think that it is better than having them at home where we are not able to help them and not supervise them and where you as parents may be at work and not be able to supervise them either. Right, Nadine, Nadine Clark has her hand up. Can you um, unmute and go ahead? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My question is for those that are who do sporting activities. Mm. Will there be training for them during this period? All right, so we are working with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health as it will relates to sports in um in schools. What we I know from Issa's perspective. What we have decided is that we will not have junior competitions. So the competitions that normally grade sevens and eights are involved in, we're not going to have those competitions until the final term of the school year, meaning in April, May, June, right? Um, as it relates for the senior students, we are planning to have um, football competitions, um, netball, basketball, um, but we, we are working on the protocols and it is not a given that it will happen, but we are, we are trying to, we are trying to have these competitions, but it will only be done with the permission of parents. So parents, any competition that we're going to be involved in, parents will have to give, give us written consent for them to be involved. All right. Uh, questions, um, Shanika Simpson, see your hand is up as well. I'm not hearing you well. You're muffled. Danica. All right. Can you just mute? Sorry. It was a mistake. I'm sorry. Continue conversation. All right. Thank you. Can you mute back your phone? Um, Arlene Lawrence. Arlene, you had your hand up. All right, nothing from Arlene. Um, Diana Powell. Hello, Mr. Wellington. Hello, parents. Hello, students. Can you hear me clearly, sir? Yeah, very clearly. Okay, my question is in relation to accounting family statements. I see where it says internal examinations, mm -hmm. parent alert. Yes. Charges credit fifteen hundred dollars and balance two thousand seven. What is that mm -hmm. for, sir? All right. So you would have gotten your your statements. Um, everybody would have got the statement, and it is um a fee that we charge every year for to assist with the cost of doing um students' ex internal examination, processing of the papers, and so on. Um, and the the alert the what is it? Renweb alert. You said. Uh, that is that is for our messaging messaging okay. mechanism to pay for the cost of sending out messages and so on. Okay, sir. But okay, my daughter is going to nine grade now, and it's only once that I've ever received a message mm -hmm. 
-hmm. from states via text message, nothing from when web, no WhatsApp, nothing. All right. All right, so we need to, I know the Ren web messaging, we basically stopped using the Ren web messaging during the course of this year because we were having issues with it. But we still use RenWeb. RenWeb is one of the platforms that we use. Um, we pay, we pay up almost a million dollars a year um, for that service. Um, so that the cost, the charge is there is to assist with the cost of using that um, using RenWeb, which is the system we use to record um, all the students' um, grades. It is where all the students' files are kept. So it's an electronic system that we pay an annual subscription, well, a monthly subscription fee for. But we as the parents, shouldn't we have access to it? And I'm, as I'm saying, my daughter is going to grade nine, right? All right, so, so, so just a second, just a second, web. just yes, a second. Sir. Yes, you should have access to it. And I did say it, I did say it earlier, earlier this afternoon, that every student, every right. student and parent will be given a, um, a Google account, an email address, and you will have access, you will have access to RenWeb where you can check students' grade, we will use it for online teaching. You can use it to check student attendance and all of that. So when they come back to school in September, part of the process will be for will be for orientation for them, sensitize them as to how to I'm, I'm going to mute everyone again. All right. I'm Thank you very much, sir. Yes. All right. Thanks for the questions. Right. Um, Misha Gay Williams, you can unmute and ask your questions. Misha Gay. All right, let me, not, nothing from Misha Gay. Carleen Salmon. Yeah, yeah, Carleen. Yeah. Any questions from you, Carleen? No. All right, nothing from Carleen. Um, Laurent Ellis. Yes, uh, sir. Good afternoon. I. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I am concerned about you spoke about those students who did not do their work over yes. the, the the time that they will have to do it. Yes. How how will that be done? Will the student who did there would they have to they be part of that too? All right, very good question. Very good question because you don't want to hold back um, some persons at the expense of others. And that is why we would have hoped that um, everybody would have made the effort. But what we will do, um, and this is why this is why we are going to do the, the online classes, although we will have face-to-face -face, um, every day. So the teachers, and what we have done as well is to ask the time, we have tried to timetable the teachers, the same teachers who had the students last year, to timetable them again. Please, the persons who are not muted. Right, we have tried to timetable the same teachers who had the students last year to have them again this year because they would know them and know where they were. And what we will do is to these persons who, who are, are left behind. So a lot of time will be spent trying to find out where persons are and, and to, um, where necessary or where possible to give them extra work to do on their own. But we will still, teachers will still be expected to cover all the material. How quickly they'll be able to do it will be dependent on how many persons would have covered the area during the period, right? But yes, um, we, we know that some persons are ahead of others, but we want to make sure that everybody catches up, right? Um, does that answer your question? Uh, to some extent, because my child is concerned because she did work and she wouldn't want to have to uh, be wasting time to go back. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. I understand. I understand, but we also don't want to. But I also appreciate the fact that there's some who are behind. And yeah, uh, you, you really need to catch up on the others. Yeah, so what we will do, um, what we will do in, case, in, in cases like these, Teachers may use the Google Classroom to ask students who are working on their own to, you know, to help them along online. And that is, that is one of the reasons too why we have decided that we want everybody back at school because it would be more challenging to have some persons at home still, right? or to have persons at home, or to have some persons coming for three days, some for three days. It will be too much of a challenge. So we have a lot of space at States, 
And so we're trying to make use of that space, but we're going to ask parents and students to work with us to understand the amount of work that is going to be required on their own. All right? Um, Thank you very much, sir. All right, Colleen. Yes, good afternoon, everyone, uh, Mr. Wellington. Um, I probably missed something because I'm currently at work and I had to step out for a bit. But just excuse me in case I'm asking a question that was already addressed. Um, how many days will school in school classes be held versus online? Do you know that? Every day. We will have school every day, five days of week, okay. five days of the week from okay. eight to three. Okay. Right. And behind um as it relates to sub um, students falling behind because of the online classes since March. Um, if a student is behind in certain oh, subjects, will they be held behind uh -huh. because of those or they will move on and try to catch up during right. the upcoming school year? All right, so we will not be holding anybody back. We will not be holding anybody back, but we'll be trying, we, we, will, we are aware that some persons are behind and therefore every effort would be made would be made to, 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 to get persons to catch up. But again, I want to remind you as parents and those children who are on that the extra effort is going to be required. We will have to, in the 10 months between September and June, we will have to ensure that not only are those 10 months. That, let, me mute, let me just mute everybody again. Oh. Right, in the 10 months between in the 10 months between September and June, we will not only have to ensure that the syllabus that would have normally been done during that time is done, we will also have to make sure that the work that was not done between March and June of this year is also done, right? And it is going to it's not just the teacher's responsibility to get it done, the students and the parents will have to play their part, right? The good thing about your children in grades eight and nine is that you have a little bit more time. But the same thing will apply to the student who is going into grade 11 and will be doing exams in eight months time, right? But everybody will have to work together. The time that is used to play and watch TV, we will have to sacrifice those times, right? Students who, when teachers ask the students to stay over and do extra work, they will have to do it. When it's homework time, they have to spend time doing the homework. Saturdays, weekends, they have to spend time doing some of the extra work, right? So all of that, we, we, we have to play our part. We have to work together as a team, parents, teachers, students. We have to work together to get all of this done. Um, all right, um, this is, I think, Bokyanan. Uh, I had one more question, sorry. Mr. Wellington. I'm sorry, before you move on. Um, uh -huh. how, how can I be added to the texting WhatsApp group? I've been to the different meetings and I've left my numbers, but I've not been receiving any of those messages. All right. So. I, your form, which grade is your child going into? She's moving on to, seven, um, she's now currently 7F, moving on to 8F. 8th grade. At, I'm not sure who the grade 8 coordinator is. Every single grade level, each, there are grade coordinators. And the grade coordinator has a phone with every parent name and number, right? So we use that, the, those WhatsApp messages. Um, you should be getting it from the grade coordinator. Your grade so seven. I'm okay. going to give. I'm going to give you a number. I'm going to put a number well, in. I'm the, on the grade seven. I'm on the grade seven F WhatsApp. So there is not a general. There should be I'm one. I'm sorry about that. There is not a general um, message for the um, text WhatsApp group for the school. It's just um, a grade. Yeah, we have one, but we don't. We are not sure how accurate it is. So we will use. I remember that. If you look at the, the message that I sent out in your package that you collected, we want to post our messages online because everybody have access online now. You can go on Facebook, you can go on the different um, platforms that we have so that we can share information with you. But we have decided, we have decided to use the year, group, um, the year group messages because it's much easier to manage 315 persons than it is to manage 1,800, right? So that's why we have, we have done, we have gone by the year group um, groups rather than the one big school group. Right? The school group messages will be posted. All the messages will post them in our, on our social media platform. Okay, thank you for that. That clears right. it. Yeah. 
Okay, and of, yes. Uh, message again. Um, Colleen, Colleen, doctor. Yes, um, I wanted to find out what sizes were the, what, would the class size remain the same and for the persons, we're going to be getting access to web web so that we can uh, monitor our children's progress, correct? Yes, yes, um, yes. But that monitoring would only be to our, our children so nobody else would no, be no. able to see. Right, okay. right. Right, because so everybody, how big, mm -hmm. go ahead. everybody will have their um their own password, username and password that only gives you access to your child's information. Okay, right? and my my son is in a class of I think thirty forty five. Forty five. the class it? sizes, would the class sizes remain the same for All when right, they so, are in face to face? All right. So so no, he would still be in a class of forty five but not all 45 of them will be in the room at the same time, right? So that I, I don't know if you came on late, but I explained how it will work, and that each class of 45 will be divided into five groups of nine. So every day, one group. So that's nine students would not be in class in their physical space. They will be at school, but they will be in a holding area. So we're going to have three hold. We're going to have a holding area for grade seven, one for grade eight, and one for grade nine. And the students who are not in class that day, they will be in the holding area. They will be supervised by teachers. They will have access to the internet. The subject that they are doing on that day, they will know the topic and they will be able to do work related to the topic on their own there. And then they'll get the notes from the teacher or the students. Okay, so that 30 odd students that will be left in that physical class, um, mm -hmm. that number is sufficient enough for the social distancing for the students in that class? Yes, yes. So the ministry has now, um, for school, schools in September, they have changed the physical distancing from six feet to three feet. So they'll be three feet apart in the classrooms. Okay, and during all class sessions and on campus, all students are required to wear masks? Yes, uh, yes, and I did say that earlier. They, they will be okay. required to wear masks, but we don't expect them to keep on the mask for the entire day. So again, what we, what we will allow um, students are going to be allowed, for example, to leave the class while class is in session. And they may ask permission to just go outside and take off the mask for a few minutes, right? Or during break time or lunch time, we have a large campus. So we'll have seating and so on around on the bleachers and uh, wherever where they, they can stay the six feet or more from their friends and take off the mask. But once they get within six feet of, their, of anybody, they need to have on the mask. Right? And again, okay, that's it. Thank you. As parents, you have to remind them of this, right? You have to keep reminding, reminding them. All right, um, Douglas Smith. Sorry. Yes. I have a problem because I, I am asthmatic and, and I came there last week to pick up my daughter report. Yes. And I see problem come. I don't know if anybody come in because these children do not practice social distancing. They do not have support? I heard you said these students, I heard you said these students. Both students that is. No, you're cracking up so I'm not hearing you. I am Mr. saying that, I am saying that I had a problem. I, I see a problem that's coming. Because yes. what about the students that have underlying issues? Like All right, so, and yes. other. All right, so, so, so that's another issue, right? <laughs> Mr. Smith? Yes, Mr. Anita. Right, so, so I'm going to be sending out something for you via the same WhatsApp group about um, students with what is called comorbidities, right? Meaning that they have underlying um, illnesses that put them at greater risk. Um, the policy, the policy of the government is that those once students are likely to be at risk, then they are going to be allowed to stay at home, right? Now, we are going to allow them to stay at home, that's number one. Number two, once we have the information regarding this situation, if you as parents feel as if um, you want the child to be here, but not in the particular situation that they may be in, 
we are going to be willing to have them come on campus, not go to classes with everybody else, but because maybe because they don't have internet at home, they could come and stay on campus and have access to their classes online. It is going to be difficult because we are not going to necessarily be able to have a challenge with people who won't mute their, their, their phones. Right, so we are going to provide them with the opportunity to be present on campus to use the, the internet that is available. Um, we will also try and get our, make arrangements for them to, 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 to get work done and for teachers to spend time with them if they are not able to sit in classes. Right, so we, I'm going to be sending out a form on, via the WhatsApp group that you can just go online, click, type your student name, which class he, he or she is in, and what is the particular concern that you have regarding their illness. Right, so I will send, them, send out that by Thursday and you can um, just fill up the form online and we'll get it back right away. All right, so students with asthma or any respiratory problems or anything at all that you have that you think that you don't want them to, to, to be in any situation where they may catch COVID as it may be um, a lot riskier for them. All right, I um, still see a lot of hands up. Um, SMJ260A, I do SMJ two J two six zero A. Yes, sir. Good evening. My mother was asking me if, um, like, when we are not in class and like we are outside at the grandstand, like, are we going to use our phones to do the schoolwork there, sir? Yes, we we have changed the policy to allow students to use their cell phones for schoolwork purposes only, not for conversations, not for texting, and not for disturbing others, right? So they'll be, they'll be able to take their cell phones as well as a tablet or a laptop to school. Okay, sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, um, question, Boston Heat. Boston, no. I'm um, Christy. Curleen. You know why I reach for you? Don't want it. Give me the spirit. Curleen, Christy. Let me unmute you. Yes, sir. Good evening, the parents and you, sir. The yeah. question I'm asking: Will the mask, the mask, the training at school be ready now? The twenty second. Yes, yes. We already have some here. And the next question, I was looking on the voucher that you took this time of the parents to pay the school fees. There's no way we write the account number. There's no way that you write the what number? The account number. I don't see any way we write the account number. What approved number? Account number to pay the school fees. Oh, the voucher, the bank voucher. No, man, it's, it's printed on the voucher already. They are called number on the voucher already. So it's on the voucher. You don't have to write any account number on it. The voucher is there. The number is on the voucher. Okay. All right? My question to you. Uh, hold on. Let me just mute again. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. All right. Let's it. All right. Next person. Um. Elvis Bikari. Yes, sir. Um, yes. Mr. Well, are, are you hearing me? Yeah, man, we're hearing you. Good. Um, Mr. Wellington, have you, have any of you, the, the, the schools, uh, ever considered the shift system? Um, some schools have considered the shift system. The government does not want any school going on shift. Um, from our perspective as well, we don't want to go on shift. We have never operated on shift and we don't think that we need to know either. Um, we have students from as far as Westmoreland, St. James who travel every day. It would pose a problem and bear in mind that September, um, it gets dark by 5.30 as well. So um, it's not a viable option for us. Well, I, I was thinking more of three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon for school. Yeah, it, was, it, it, is, it is an option that was considered 
the ministry does not want it. Um, from our perspective as well, we would not have wanted it to do so. What the, the, the option that the ministry has given for SHIP is that students come to school some days and stay home other days, but no shift. Okay, sir, thanks. All right, uh, Misha Gay. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, parents. Um, okay. I collected the package and I saw where you were saying that the, the students should collect a code to monitor their, the how they use the, the tablets and the phones on campus. But my question is, how would you uh, monitor that? Because you know that I was a student and I know how they work mm -hmm. and all of that. So how would you monitor all that? No, man, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, the issue of the code was for you to, if you're taking phones or tablets on campus, you must write down, I think it is the IME code, so that you know which one is yours. So that if, if somebody steals it or you lose it, when we find it back, you can use that identifier um, to, to know whose one it is. I think that is what was, was said. Uh, okay, sir. And also another question. In terms of the sanitization of the areas that mm. students would engage in, I know mm -hmm. that it's a big campus, but what would be um, implemented for the sanitization throughout the days mm -hmm. as they interact in those areas? All right, good question. Good question as well. So um, what is expected? When we resumed school for the grade 11s and 6 formers form in June, we used only about, um, I think about seven or eight rooms. And what we did, we had classes in large blocks in terms of time. So from 8, 30 in the morning until 10 30 and then from 11 until 11 until 1 i think and then no 11 to 12 30 and then 1 30 to 3 so you, they moved out of the room only three times and we had persons who went in after each class to do the sanitization right no that won't necessarily be possible as you said on a large campus for us to cover all the areas so one of the things that we are expecting is that each student will have their own personal sanitizers, right? So you're going to have your, make sure that everybody have their little um, sanitizing bottle that they can use to sanitize their own um, body parts. We are also going to have wash stations right around the campus. I think in total, we may have outside of what we normally have as, have as drinking fountains, we are likely to have about 20, 25 um, wash stations. We will also have teachers um, coming to class with sanitizers to ensure that sanitization is done. The campus, of course, will be sanitized morning and evenings. So the workers will sanitize, but during the day, as you have already said, it's going to be difficult for us to sanitize everywhere, every time somebody moves from a particular place. So it's going to be important that the student themselves practice their own sanitizing. And then there are, there are high traffic areas that will be sanitized right throughout the day, but not as you, I don't think every single seat that the student sits on will be sanitized every time they get up from the seat. All right? Okay, sir, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Latoya Powell. Latoya, your hand is up. Nothing from Latoya. Uh, let me see who it is. Janice Miller Hamilton. Janice. They are on mute. Yeah, oh, let's see. Please unmute yourself when it's your time to talk. Good evening. Good evening, Janice. Good evening, Mr. Wellington. Good evening. Where are you now? Good evening, parents. All right. Good evening. Uh, my, my child has a question. She's asking if the school will be getting any type of laptop as to assist them where possible for their class work. All right, so, so I don't know if we will have enough. I don't know if we will have enough to help everybody. But I know 100 and at least 200 students will get laptops. And at least two, not laptops, tablets, sorry. Right? We also have quite a few laptops that students will be able to use in classes. The tablets that they get, obviously, are tablets that they'll be able to take home those 200 persons will be able to take home. We will continue to see how many more we can get. And um, 
when I send out the surveys, I will ask the question as to whether or not you have your own tablet or laptop. Right? So we'll send out that survey and we ask parents to, to, to respond and we'll see how many persons we can help. What I'm sure is that the persons who are most needy, they will get. I, but okay. I, we can't promise that everybody will get. But the ones who, who have the greatest need, we are sure that we will find a way to help them. Okay. My, que my question is... Or one second, one other how time. How am I going... Janice, go ahead. How am Yes. How am I going to, to get the SMEs and so on? Because it was one of my neighbors who gave me the information that I, so that I could be on the program this evening. I've seen the paper where it's in the package that we're supposed to have a Zoom meeting, but it was one of my neighbors who had sent me and said they got um, the message, and I know that I pay for everything that I should be getting, every message. And I, thought, I think I only got one message when my child was in seven grade and she is now going into nine grade all right tell you what everybody everybody who um who is not getting the messages can you just in the chat room just type your child's name the class they are in and the phone number and i promise you by tomorrow evening you'll start getting the messages all right so just okay. type it in the chat so that when we are finished and i print the chat the questions and the comments in the chat we can use it to put your put you on in, in put you in the group all right okay um, thank you okay good good uh let me see now we also have questions from jahin is it jahin salmon okay hand salmon good evening can you hear me clearly I'm hearing you, yes. Okay, I agree with Janice on the point that I haven't received any SMM or I didn't get any information indicating that we could have um, signed up for these uh, web, web set online things and so forth, right? Yes. Um, my question is, uh, will there be any online teaching classes going on? Because you're telling me that students are allowed to bring their cell phones, laptops, and tablets into the school to do schoolwork. So are you saying that classes will be online? All right, so, my so what? Do you really need to come to school then? No. No, okay. no, 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 no. All right, so what we will be, we are not going to be able to to do all of our classes online. Right. That's number one, right? Okay. What we what we will be using the online platforms to do is to supplement what is taking place in classes. I would have already outlined the fact that this year students are going to have to do almost twice the, the volume of work that would have been normally required from them from them in a normal school year. So an online platform is going to be used to supplement the classes. So things like homework quizzes um the 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 the, class, the homework the quizzes um some some work projects will be done online right but the substantial part of the of the year's activities if things remain as they are or continue to improve will be face to face right we don't know how things may change it is possible that we will have to go back to being totally online but we have to understand that there are many persons who do not have access to online to the online platforms when they are at yeah. home, and therefore we don't want them to be left further behind. Right? All right. So we are not going to be relying solely on um, online activities at any time. And when we do online activities, we want the students to be here on campus where they can, where we are sure that they have access to the internet. And even if they don't own a, a, a tablet or a or a laptop. They can come and borrow, go to the labs and use it, or borrow a laptop for the day and use it. All right, so we want to use it as, as really as supplementary for the time being, unless it is absolutely necessary that we go back to being totally online. Okay, I am not sure what's happening, but I wasn't hearing the last things that you said, right? However, my next question is, how will I be able to be a part of the web web online platform that you are having now for step? Every student, every yeah. student will be assigned their own account. And right. we have started doing it already. As okay. a matter of fact, they have already been done. The only ones that have not been assigned are the grade seven ones that we are doing. We actually, I sent the list to the person today to upload uh -huh. them. So every student will have their own account and we will give them, we will give them their, their, their password 
so that you can go online and the instructions as to how to go online. And so by the time they come into school September. Yes, so by the time okay. they get to school, by, by the first week of school, everybody will have access. Okay, and the final thing, sir, I noticed that there are some discrepancies on uh, my son's report. Some grades are completely missing. I will understand that, yes, the school term ended abruptly. However, if it has no coursework grade, how comes there's a final grade? You know, and the grade is, is unbelievable. It's extremely low, and I'm not seeing why, because he has completed all his activities online throughout the period of time that we had online classes. So who can I bring the report in to query what is happening? Because I know sometimes technology will create glitches and mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, Mr. Kogler is here. I'm going to ask him to address the issue of reports. We expected that question because we are aware that there are some issues. Uh, Mr. Kogler, are you here still? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Willie. All right, so Mr. Kogler, wel welcome, Mr. Kogler. Um, we did say welcome you at the beginning. But go ahead and speak to the issue of reports, Samina, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wellington. Good evening to everyone. Um, last Mr. Kogel, Mr. Kogel, just give me one second. Let me mute everybody and then okay. go unmute and go ahead again. So go ahead again now, Mr. Kogel. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, last week, we would have had our report days for the respective grade levels. As was pointed out by that parent, there are some reports at grade seven and eight with English language and English literature missing. Um, upon completing the reports, we had a, a technical issue with one of our teachers' account. So we are having that sorted out. So the grades will be recorded on RenWeb, and all parents can have will get an updated report. The parent pointed out the fact that there was no coursework or midterm grade, but yet the child had a final average. Let me just explain that the report, the final average on the report is the average, the overall average from September to March. The grades that you are seeing in the homework slot and the midterm slot would have been work that was done from January through to March. Those grades go back into the system, the RenWeb system that you have been hearing about all evening. And it combines those scores with the scores that the child would have gotten in the first term to come with a final average. Yes, um, well, the, the system itself should be flawless. Sometimes a, a, a score is place on the system that is incorrect. So if you are having issues, you can always come in and we can address it. So again, we must apologize for those missing grades. But as I said, we are having the system updated. So within the next week or so, the updated reports should be ready and you can access them at your convenience. Thank you kindly. Thank you, Mr. Wellington. Thank you, Mr. Kogo. I must say it's a pleasure to be able to join from overseas. I have always missed all his staff meetings and so on, so I must say it's a pleasure. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. welcome. And just to reiterate the point that the grades, your averages or the grades would be from January to March. So we did not include, Mr. Kogel, I'm correct right. to say that we did not include the online classes that took place in March, April and May, right? Yes, that's true, Mr. Wellington. However, we know that there were some students who made really, really great effort during the period to do their work and they accomplished a lot and we are going to make sure that we recognize them. We are going to make sure that we recognize them when school resumes because we think that they went be well and they did everything that they could do to ensure that they did not miss out on their, their classes online and they, they, they made sure that they made use of the time and we are going to recognize them during the course of, of uh, the first term. All right. Uh, let me see who's hand is up again. Uh, Delina Johnson. Delina. Delina, all right, so we're not hearing from Delina. Uh, Mrs. Woodhouse, Woodhouse Hodges. Good, good evening, everybody. Good evening. 
Um, my question specifically, Mr. Wellington, is dealing with the, the shots that this, this female students got. They were supposed to get their shots, I think, in June again. Will they be getting the second one? I, I'm not sure. I have not. We have not been updated on it. So I have no, I really have nothing to share. As soon as we are, we are updated, we'll let you know. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, by the way, I want to commend you parents. We have, I think we have had a real, we are having a really good meeting. The questions that you're asking is really, really helpful. Um, when we're finished, we are going to upload the video of the meeting on our YouTube channel and on Facebook. So parents who have not gotten the chance to be here, um, the question that you're asking will go far away in helping to explain to them what is happening. I really appreciate the questions you're asking. All right. Um, Collins? Collins? Yes, good evening, Mr. Wellington. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to just thank all the teachers and staff for working so hard to keep the, these children engaged during the COVID period it was very challenging for them to get all the work done. I just want to know if the work that is outstanding, mm -hmm. should they still submit it? That's the first question. And the second question is, some teachers marked work and some did not mark it. Some didn't even acknowledge that they got the work. Yeah. So what happened there? All right, so the answer to your first question, um would be I, I would not necessarily say they are to submit the, the, the work but if i was a student i would see the teacher when i get back and ask if can i can i can you look at this for me um so that i know what i did right but um yeah. inter, but i wouldn't necessarily say that they are to still submit it right they, but i would i would want the teacher to look at it so i would go and see the teacher the next issue of teachers not marking some teachers not marking i I have no doubt that what you're saying is true. I think that this would have been a really, really challenging period for everybody, both teachers, parents, and students. I can tell you, I have a little son who should have done um, PEP. He was in grade six. And if, he, if, I, if I wasn't as capable as I am, or his mother wasn't as capable of, as, 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 um, as she is, he would have was been really challenging because required a lot of us as parents and I'm sure that for the teachers it also required a lot of them and I know the students would have had their challenges. So I, I, I am aware that we would have had our shortcomings but for me, for me the important thing is how do we move on, how do we learn from what would have transpired, how do we make sure that we improve because the likelihood is there as a matter of fact, more than the likelihood, it is definitive that going forward, online classes will be a part of what we do. It. Whether there is COVID or not, we believe that the, the, the experience and the opportunity that it presents is good enough for, us, for our students to benefit from it. So we'll be looking at how we can get um, people to improve how they, how they deliver online classes. I have to commend the teachers because, as you know, um, we did not know that school was going to be out until when we were told that there would be no school on Friday the 13th of March. The students were basically on their way through the gates. So we had to get our teachers back the next day. We had to be teaching some of our teachers how to use some of these platforms. Right? So I want to commend them for their efforts. And as I said before, the important thing for us is how do we improve upon what we have offered. And for me, for me, we are not good. We are not good if we don't improve on our experiences and so we want to use the experiences over the last few months to improve what we do for our students and hope that they are going to be able to benefit from, from these experiences. Okay. Again, let me mute everybody. Still have an issue with person's background. All right. So I, I hope that answers your question and I think it, is a, it was a valid question. Okay, sir. One more question. If you're not in a WhatsApp group now for the for the for the grade, like the grade that she's in, by September you'll be in that group because I'm not in a I'm not if, in a group if, for her. If you send me the number on the chat now, by tomorrow you'll be in the group. Okay, and um well this is just my observation. I don't know if we can 
the groups that we're in, how we can manage them. But mm -hmm. I tend to find, because I've been in WhatsApp groups over the years, and some of them have just, just left because after a while, yeah, the, the person start right. to talk about stuff and, and put stuff in the group that has nothing to do with the school and it just gets just too much. Yeah, so yeah, if we can I, get yeah, some, some way that they, I think they can, um, only messages can come out and we can't put messages in or something like that, but. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and it's a concern. It's, and it's at all levels of society, even in my principal group. I be I barely but comment sometimes, right? Um, but yes, you agree. And again, that is why I'm encouraging you to make sure that you you are aware of the different social media platforms we have, so that when we post the information and uh, whatever important information we have, we post them in multiple places so that you can have access to them. All right. Uh, um, we had wanted this to be a fairly, a fairly short meeting. We have gone an hour plus, but we need to hear from everybody who wants to speak. So let me ask uh, Ms. Bramwell, Sharika, to go ahead. Sharika. Good evening. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm muffled, but I'm hearing you. Uh, I'm saying about the devices, right? Uh, are we the parents the ones supposed to come up with the phone for the devices? Your, your, line, your line is very bad. Sharika, the line is very bad. We're not hearing you. You're cracking up. Are you hearing me now? Better, yes. I'm saying the devices that the children should be bringing into school. Are we the ones supposed to be the ones to um, have a, a code for it? No, ma. Yeah, ma. You are, remember, the, the code is on the, on the device now. So the students know. Trust me. Maybe me and you don't know because we're old. But the students know. Tell them to write their I, I think it's I M E I number. Every, every device have their own. So it's a unique number. So just ask them to write down the identifier so that, um, so that they, they know what is their own, what is their, their thing. So if they lose it, whether by stealing or otherwise, once you find it, you are able to, to, um, to identify it as your own. Identify it with that code. Okay. Um, next question, sir. Um, the school fee that is supposed to be paid, right? Due to the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic that we're having now, Due to the light at the bank. Is oh, go again. Sorry, sir. We're not go again. hearing her. We're not hearing you. Just go again. Are you hearing me now? Yes, you, uh, you started up by saying the school fee that is to be paid. Yes, during this um, pandemic that we have now, my question is is it possible we are, all right, you know the banks are practically full of no because they don't yeah. have those fees. So, mm. so um, my daughter, she have a, um, a thing, I think it's by the Alcoholics or something like that. I'm not really sure mm -hmm. the drug name for it. So I'm saying, if, 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 if I have to pay that, that school fee before she returns back to school by September. All right, I didn't get all the questions. Your line is really bad, but let me think. I think I, I can put together what you were asking. Um, for school fees, and based on what is happening at the bank with the lines and the COVID and all of that, um, could there be another arrangement for you to pay? I think that is the question. Um, we are trying to work on an, with an arrangement with the bank. Two things. We are trying to put in machines at the school so that you could come and use your cards to pay. Right? That's one. Secondly, uh, we don't want to collect cash at the school unless it's absolutely necessary. We don't want to, right? But we are trying to use to get the the banking machine so that you can use your cards to pay. And the third thing, by the end of the week, I'll be able to send out something where you may be able to go online and pay your child's school fee online, right? That is the best that we can do at this time. But um, we understand the concerns that you have. I'm okay, right? so last question. Um, I, my daughter um, received um, like uh, a bunch of things came from Alpha, right? Yes. How, how do I know that that money is already transferred to the school mm -hmm. so I can have an idea on how much money is the balance to pay at the bank? Uh, all right. So I know that it has not yet gotten to us yet, but normally they will send over a list to us with one check with everybody's name. So you'd have to just keep checking. You can check with them oh. to find out when it will be sent or check with us to find out if we have gotten it. 
So one, if one it is there, that means we do. I would have to just pay the, the remaining balance. Yes. That money that they sent to the school, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Um, we we'll got questions again. I know there are some questions being asked in the chat. Um, I will try and get to them shortly. Uh, who next now? Uh, Huawei Y9 2019. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Um, for the textbooks that they had last year, when do we bring them in? Mr. Kogel? Uh, are, are, can, they, can they bring them in when they are when they're coming for registration? No, they should not bring them in when they're coming for registration. They should keep them when they return to classes in September. Then they will be instructed as to which day they should bring them in. Okay, okay. So they should keep the books until they are told to bring them in. And, but and you keep but, but and use. Is. Keep and yes. use. Right, because as Mr. Winton has been saying in the meeting, we yes. still have to go back to some of the work that was missed out from okay. the previous school year. So the textbooks will be important for the first couple of weeks in the new school year. Okay, so they will not be getting any new one for the for when they come in at the registration then? They will no. Get, no, not at registration, no. Not that registration, but by the, the first, by the end of the first month, they should get their the, the new set for the, that grade level. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. All right. Um, who do we have? Tanil's Tanil's iPhone. Um, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, what about for devotion? And mm -hmm. I was told on the day when we came to pick up the package that school reopens on September seventh. So, is there a registration day before? All right. So, um. First of all, for devotion in terms of the gatherings, mm -hmm. you're asking about what about devotions? And you're yes. talking about the gathering. So we will not have devotions the way we normally have them. What we will do is most days is either we will have form devotions so they do it in their form classes with each other, or okay. and or we will use our PA systems. We have a PA system that you can stay in Goshen and here. So we'll mm -hmm. allow them to be if we need when we need to speak with them we will use the PA system and if we will have them, they can be all over the place and, they, and participate. Um, in terms of registration, yes, they are, if you look in your package, there are some dates given as to when they would come in to register. Um, okay. Your, uh, right, right. okay, right. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, who now? Uh, Roshan McKenzie. Good night, sir. Re right. school fee, sir. Um, there were a farm come out read the discount to government workers. Mm -hmm. You know nothing about that. Well, I think we would have addressed that um, with um, at parent teachers meeting. Yeah, I am aware that the government's policy, right, is that right. parents parents who work for the government should not um, have to pay school fees. Meaning, and let me clear what school fee is. School fee is the parent support contribution. Right? So the government right. policy is that persons who work for the government shouldn't have to pay it, as well as, as students on par. But we have said it repeatedly at states that while you don't have to pay it, what you will be doing is a disservice to your child because if everybody who doesn't have to pay don't pay, it would mean more than half of the parents at states wouldn't have to pay because we have, we have more than 700 students on par and more than 200 persons whose parents are teachers or police and so on. If you don't pay it, fine. It means that states don't have that money. And if we don't have that money, we are not going to be able to do the things that we are able to do without the help of government. Right? So we, we expect parents to still make the contribution. That contribution is $10,000 a month, which is less than a, sorry, $10,000 a year, which is less than a $1,000 a month. So we ask, we ask that parents still make that contribution. But the government's policy is that you don't have to pay. But we are asking parents to, 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 um, to pay it. I use the example. For example, me as the principal, my son is going to come to school in September at States. Right? He's going to come to States. His mother is also a teacher. 
So we shouldn't have to pay it account to the government. We believe that it is unfair. If I tell you how much my, my wife and I work, and I'm going to tell states that we can give them $10,000 a month, a year, sorry, to help when he's coming from prep school where we pay $40,000 a term, then we will be unfair and unkind to those who can't afford to, to pay for everything the child needs. And so we are making our contribution, although as the principal, I wouldn't have to pay either. Right, so we are asking all parents to make the contribution. All right? Oh, we no problem. Have, like Donald Trump, who says school mustn't open. School, sorry, who says that every school must reopen. But the school where his, <laughs> his son is going said that they're not going to open and he's not forcing them to open. We don't want to be like that. All right? Okay, thank you. All right, good, good. Um, Miss Johnson. Ms. Johnson has your has her hand up. I don't know which one of the Ms. Johnsons. All right. Not don't not talking. So Galaxy J3 orbit. Galaxy J3 orbit. No. All right, Christine. Hi there. Um, my can you hear me? Yes, we are hearing you. Okay, my question is: um, Will there be a continued online presence? For example, I really like this. I am in Atlanta. I'm able to listen in from my nephew who goes to Stats PTA meetings. Is there a plan to possibly have either some kind of live stream or something like this? where parents who are not there can listen in live and hear what's going on, probably be able to chime in that way, because I definitely. really like this. Definitely, definitely. And I'm sure that it will do a lot for all of us as a school or as parents too, as a parenting group, because I'm sure that there are persons who have a contribution to make in terms of in input into what we are doing, but they don't simply don't have the time to come to, or they don't either don't have the time or have access to be at different PTA meetings. This medium allows us to do these meetings and to do them more regularly. So yes, um, what we wanted, I wanted to stream this on Facebook today, but somehow it slipped me, but I'm going to actually post it um, on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page so that parents can, can do it. So yes, yes, and uh, you know, out of every negative comes positive. This is one of the positives that would have come out of um, out of out of COVID. I'm sure even right. questions that persons are asking when they come to meetings, some of them don't want to stand up and ask. Right? But I think we are really, this is something that is useful and we will continue to use it, whatever happens. Just as we are saying for the classes, we will continue to use online classes whether or not there is COVID. Because it's a tool that is useful and it provides us with opportunities that we would not otherwise have. Great, great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, LGK4, we want to wrap up shortly. Um, it's now 28 minutes after 7. Um, and I think we have done really well. LG, LGK4. No one to ask. All right. Um, I think we'd have covered all the questions. Let me just go to the chat and see if there's anything important. Somebody just put up their hand. Terrell? Terrell, you want to ask a question? Terrell Hastings and Natalie Griffiths. Natalie? No? All right, so I assume that those are the questions. Let me just quickly go to the chat and see if there's anything I need to answer. Um, da -da Anybody have any questions that they, they think needs to be answered because we're wrapping up now? Is there any question that you think we, we should have asked, should have answered? <coughs> Sorry. No? All right, so if there are no question. questions. <laughs> yes. Is the auxiliary fee a one-time payment? <coughs> the auxiliary fee, uh, let me be sure of what you're asking for auxiliary fees. What is it you I call auxiliary fees? On my child's statement, and I noticed that I'm seeing a balance for $5,000. Yes, so auxiliary fees you pay, the auxiliary fee is $10,000 per year. So for grade eight students in total, 
in total your fees for the entire year all the fees everything is twelve thousand seven hundred dollars for both grade eight and nine so for the entire year your entire fee amounts to twelve thousand seven hundred dollars okay so the auxiliary fees are, is so, so come again in the middle of the year or something we have to pay another five thousand for auxiliary yes, yeah yeah because i think okay. you were for seven thousand seven hundred this term right uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the entire year, uh, for both grade eight and nine, it is twelve thousand seven hundred. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Bikari here, sir. Yeah, Mr. Bikari. Thank you. It's not really a question of such. It's a commendation to you and the the family at States. Mm -hmm. I must commend you guys on the job that you are doing there, and especially to your VP, Mr. Kog. Uh, yes. He's really doing an excellent job. And I really like the development that Stets is under. Continue to do the good work, um, sir, that you and the family, the Stets family is doing up there. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. I remember that when you speak of the Stets family, you include yourselves because it's all of us. Yes, sir. All of us, right? And, and, Definitely, and to be honest, sir, and whatever I can do to assist the family, I will. Yeah, man. And I, I, I must say too, that I appreciate the support I get from our students and the parents. We know that there are some persons who are always, there are always going to be some persons who are not satisfied, but by and large, we think that we, our students are proud of who they are and where they are, and our parents are proud and they offer the support, as much support as they can, whether it's going to be financial or otherwise, but we want to continue to build this institution and to ensure that our students, our children, benefit from whatever we are doing because at the end of the day um i said to you earlier that my son is going to be a student here in september so i know how to all i also know play the role of a parent and of course you know that i would not have had my son attending any institution in this country unless i thought it was the best one for him all right so i it is the confidence i have in our teachers and our our school as a whole our school family because if i thought he was going to come here and interact with tiger eggs and spoil his character, I wouldn't have him here either. Right, so um, I want to thank all of you and I want to want us to continue to work together. Now I'm going to be working to working with you as a fellow parent, and therefore I have added interest in what is happening. So thank you very much, Mr. Bikari. Um Jodian's hand, hand went up while you were talking, so I don't know if he has a question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, well, when will school be resumed specifically for grade eight? All right, so grade eight and grade seven and eight, so those who are in grade seven now, they will start the first day of school, September 7. All right, so September 7, Monday, September 7. Those who are in grade, going to grade nine, they will start on September 8. That's Tuesday, September 8. All right, assuming, assuming that things remain the way they are and we have and we are able to go ahead with our plans. And please remember to keep that in the back of your mind at all times, that COVID will determine a lot of what we do and how we do it. All right, um, is that Zephira? Zephira, you have your hand up? Somebody with, you, with your finger up, I can't pronounce the name, you can go ahead. All right, I want to ask this question. You said the, set, the, the, the school fees were 7,700, we still have to pay like five thousand in the year. Why we can't just pay the twelve thousand dollars and the therapy? You can, you can. You are free to go ahead and pay it. We'd be happy to collect it. <laughs> so we can pay the twelve thousand dollars and the square for the year. Yes, you can. Twelve thousand seven hundred. Something like that. Now you pay seven seven now and then by the year come here for the pay the other five thousand. February you pay five thousand, right? Yeah. Uh -oh. you, know, you can go ahead and pay it, and we won't raise it, so nobody have to worry that it's going to be raised. <laughs> okay, just want to know that. Yes. Uh, when we get the package, you know, I'm just think, I think I was just saying 7,700 ever pay for the year. So oh, that's the thing it's not no. Okay, good. And why we have to go to the bank? Why we can't come to the school? The bank is so crowded. Yeah, man. As I said, we're working on something. By the end of the week, we will we will share whatever information we are able to. And who don't have any ATM card? I so why? We can't call it the cash, you know, but it's a security risk that we don't want to to. You um, know if we're going no, to do cash, if we're going to do cash, we'll put aside one day where everybody would have to come with the cash on that day. Right. Because we're going to get the additional security. Easier. 
Is that yeah, we come to the school, I'm gonna join this long line for the old day. All right, so we'll work on it. Question. We'll work on it and we'll probably put aside a day and have you coming on that day if you have cash, right? Yes, sir. All right, so Paul, yeah? Mr. Wellington, Mr. Wellington, sorry, Mr. Vicari. Um, and my son, um, bank no. voucher, it is 7,700. You are saying the school fee for the entire school year is 12 or 10? 12,700, 12, 12, so in February, oh, sorry, let me mute everybody again. Let me mute everybody again. All right, right, Mr. Bikari, so the fees, the entire fees for the year, for grade eight and nine is 12,700. So you were billed for 7,700 now, and in February, you'll get another bill for $5,000. But if you want to go ahead and pay the entire um, 12 7 that's fine. All right. Um, Sophonia, and then Mr. Kogel. Sophonia, you can unmute and go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Wellington. Good evening. Um, when I came for the package, I just um, paid the 7 5 at the bank. But then I need to get another voucher to go and pay the other five. Um, I didn't even, I was, I'm in Montego Bay, so what I did, I just, since I came up, I just did it at that time. So I need to pay the balance five at the bank. You can, or, you can, or if you want, if you want, you can, send, you can, when you are registered, they can pay the extra five thousand. So much time, they can pay the extra. Okay, all right, no problem. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Cole. You have to be going to the bank. Well, let me just mute everybody again, please. But in February, you will have to pay. Mr. Kogel, go ahead now. Unmute and go ahead. Yes, sir. Some parents have been asking about the medical, Mr. Wellington. Mm -hmm. You can give us an update on that, sir. And you return. Um, mm -hmm. well, let me just unmute. You can go ahead, sir. Returning students don't have to do a medical. Okay. All right. They don't have to do a medical. So they don't, the returning students don't have to. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. All right, I think we would have answered. Mr. Wellington? Yes, Carol. Good, good night. Just, just a confirmation. You were saying that the persons who are getting a vote from our part, the 7,005, can we just go ahead and pay the 5,000? That's what you said, right? Your vote, yeah. Well, if you know you're getting 75 from our part, yes. Yes, you okay. can go ahead and pay the 5,000. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Um, any other question? I think we have done well. We have done an hour and a half and more. So let me thank you very much, parents. And um, I think um, this, is, this has been a really, really good meeting. I really appreciate the questions you have asked. You have made the reopening of school a lot easier for us because now I can just say, go and watch the PTA meeting to get all the answers for the questions you asked. So thank you very much. Thank Mr. you very much. Yes. Just a minute. All right. Like how you um, started Devante passed last year for state to see and states um I'll part give him seven thousand five seven thousand something. They give it every year? I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I don't even know what is happening at all part. I am not sure. To be honest, I don't know. Okay. You'd have to check with them. Okay. All right. Oh, then, sir, have a good right. night. Yeah, man. Thank you. And thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Chambers, for doing prayers if you are still here. All right. Thank you very much. And um, you'll hear from us again before the term, before September. All right. Okay, sir. Have a blessed evening. Thank you. Um.